Welcome back lighting friends, Rob from Pathway Connectivity Solutions. Last time we looked at Cognito's control wheels tools and I said I was going to look at positions this time and show you all of the different ways that you can adjust the pan tilt attributes of your moving lights. So I have my VL2K here and what I'm going to do is on the interface I can just select a group I have called my front of house VL2Ks and then I will hit on the console the hard position button and lo and behold the wheels tool comes up and it shows that the red wheel is for pan and the green wheel or C wheel is for tilt. So let's have a look when we turn these guys clockwise here my light starts tilting down and when I turn the pan wheel clockwise what happens is the light starts turning clockwise away from me. Now that may not always be the case, but uh, if you wanted to change that around, what you do is you click on the advance button and you can say here invert either pan or tilt. So I am going to press the invert pan button and now you see the light moves a bit. When I go back to my wheels control and I move the pan wheel clockwise, it actually moves counterclockwise based on the fixture position here. I don't like that. I like clockwise being clockwise. So this depends on where you hang them in your rig, if they're coming from the top or they're on the floor. So you might have to set that up. And it's a good thing to set these parameters up first thing in so that whenever you record some of your libraries later down the road, everything is lining up. So if we went back to select, and remember, a quick way of going back to select is hitting the two shift buttons simultaneously. And that gets us back to our last display. What you see in the center of the uh, circle for this VL2K spot is a little arrow. And that arrow is pointing essentially in the direction of where it is. So again, if I move my wheels, uh, hang on, let's uh, go back into control, set my wheels tool, then I can go back to select. Either way, I'll just touch select here. Now, the red is my pan again. And you can see as I pan the light clockwise, the little arrow moves to its different positions. So right up at 12 o'clock here, this light is going at 90 degrees to its, its default position. Um, and if I move it a number of ticks along here, now I know it's going right angles to where it was going before. Now we spoke when we were playing with wheels last video how you can quickly get to some of these sensible values like 90 or 180 or 135. So if we go back to our tools control, remember I said pressing the button, in this case the B button or the red uh, wheel button, it brings up a pop-up list and I can say let's set that to zero degrees and that gives me a sensible value. And if I say go to minus 90 degrees, then it comes directly towards me here and plus 90 degrees will move it directly opposite to where it was. So uh, that's a little bit on the wheels. We talked about that in depth last video. Um, what I want to talk about now is some of the other tools that we use to position the lights quickly. We have uh, advanced where you saw where I could invert the pan and tilt. There's another very handy button here inside of Advance, and that is set the position attributes to their defaults. So let's see what happens if we press that here. The light goes to its default position, which is uh, often a good way to start things. Um, if we go back to wheels here, let's just uh, move this off. There's another um, parameter here called the, uh, or another tool, I'm sorry, called the bullseye. And that is a little representation of the arrow, which I just spoke about, which is in the select. So if you go back to select, you can see this guy is just slightly pointed off center towards the you know, 2, 1.30, 2 o'clock position. And the same is true here. So now I'll learn that pressing right about here will get me pointing towards the stage. And if I went over here, it would actually be pointing not on the stage in this case. Um, and that is directly represented in the display uh, in the circle as well. Uh, one of the other things I'd like to mention at this point while we're looking at this circle is these four arrows here 
are actually showing that out of all of the attributes of intensity, color, position, and shape, we have tweaked or played with the position attributes. If I were to grab intensity attributes, then we would actually see the little light bulb. And uh, just to labor the point, if we went into color and we changed one of the color attributes and then went back to select, you would actually see the little paintbrush. And the same would be true if we went into shape and we changed um, um, one of the gobos perchance. Then there we go. Now we see intensity, position, color, and shape. So we know this lights, those attributes have changed just recently. So that's uh, a little bit more about what's going on inside of this circle. So let me release this stuff out now. We'll have another quick look at the bullseye tool. Uh, so we have to go into control, position, bullseye. There's a circle that's halfway out here. And what that circle shows is a 45 degree angle on the tilt, which is pretty handy. And this guy right here is a 90 degree angle on the tilt. So it's going exactly perpendicular to the lighting pipe. Uh, and if I went over here, that would be on this axis, it would be 90 degrees uh, from its default position. So that's what the circles mean here. And for each light in your rig, you'll probably learn where, um, where you need to be to get there quickly. So that's a, a second method, third method, if you include the wheels, the default value, and the bullseye. I skipped right over here to other methods. Uh, one is the joystick. And the joystick is like on some very old controllers where you actually had a joystick that would self-center itself. So if I press up and then let go, it jumps back down to the center. So just by touching on the touch screen, if I just... Uh, uh, let's say I'm going to tip up, which would be below its position. It will actually slowly, and as long as I'm holding it, it will continue to tip. And I let go, and it centers. And if I uh, move to the left of the dot and hold it, it will start panning left. When I let go, it stops its pan. So this is relative to where it is. The distance at which you press away from the center is the speed in which things will pan. And always centering. And then if you obviously hit in one of the, uh, you know, uh, two o'clock or uh, four o'clock or seven o'clock or 11 o'clock positions, it will do a combination of pan and tilt. So there you go. Um, one of the other methods that uh, we will discuss much later in the video series is libraries. And I have gone ahead here and recorded some very useful positions. Uh, this guy right here, when I press control libraries, exposes all of the position, which are green little libraries here, for uh, things that I have recorded already. So if I just press this button, the light will go towards the stage. And if I hit the back of house button, it will point towards the back of the house. Or I could hit the down left button, or I could hit the down right button. So we'll discuss later using the record task how you can populate this up with all of the sensible tools that you may need. Now, uh, in the wheels discussion, we did talk about something that I want to uh, impress upon you again here is holding down shift and hitting the B or C button will take any attribute, in this case tilt, to its default position. And hitting it again will take it to one of its extents. In this case, it is minus 135 degrees. That matches here. And if I hit it again, it will go to plus 135 degrees, which will match there. And the third time round, it will take it back to its default position. So on Cognito, those are the tools that you can use to pan and tilt your light. Now, if you've gone ahead and got a Neato app, there's two other methods that you can do it. Inside of Neato's spot position controls, we have here the nudge control. And this is very similar to the joystick. And what we do is I will just hold down my finger here and it will slowly, slowly, slowly tilt. And then if I move my finger to the left here, 
it will slowly, slowly pan towards me, let go. If I hold my finger, pull this guy here towards the right, it will go away from me. And the more I move it to the extents, the faster it will move. And one of the other tricks is using the built-in accelerometer of the iPad, I can, I can press the drive button. It doesn't matter where I start this process. If I hit the drive button, it basically says, okay, there's the new position from starting. And if I tilt the iPad towards me, the light will tip up. If I move it back to its resting position, it will go down. And here I'll tilt it away from me. And there we go. So, and obviously doing it this way, we'll pan it and that will pan it the other way. So this is great if you want to go up on stage and, uh, and do a little bit of moving of the lights uh, behind the curtain or something to that effect. There's another one under spot position bullseye. This looks just like the guy that we're already familiar with. So this, this is very much mimicking what's already on the Cognito display. So I can actually just move here 90 degrees to there. I have my 45 degree line and I have my 90 degree line. In this case, I can go beyond it and tip down. So bullseye is another one. It's showing the pan and tilt values here. And on every screen, if you see this little recycle icon, you can always set things to the default. Now there's one other method of control inside of uh, play wheels. When I hit the uh, pan tilt uh, controls, when I, I have here multi-touch control of the wheels. So this is another method that you can go up on stage and make some fine tuning adjustments of your moving lights and, uh, and get the most out of it with your Neato app connected to um, the Cognito console. So until next time, uh, I'm Robert and the next video we will be doing, we'll be doing all of this again with the color controls. Thanks for joining me.